2004. Uh, PPG Grandpa, Fair Motor Podcast, Clear Prop TV, and Paratalk.org. This is going to be a great podcast. Well, it's always a good podcast. It's always a great podcast because look at look at who we have here. We got a lot of amazing people. You know, uh, let's say hi to Paramount USA real quick. Uh, Wind Pirate, I'm going to put you on mute. I, I hear a lot of stuff in the background there. Paramount <laughs> USA, what's up? Good to see you. Welcome. Welcome, chatters. Welcome, viewers. It is Monday night. Thanks for coming and hanging with us. We got all kinds of cool stuff going on tonight. We got Mike Cotter in the house. Michiganders rock. Yes, I have to, you know, shout out Michiganders out there. And um, yeah, just sit back and enjoy the show. Eat your snacks and uh, there you go. Absolutely. And if you want to be on the show, make sure you get up with Linda Anderson. You can find her over at ParamomUSA.com. Excellent. I always forget that part, but you say I it know, better. Right. Of course. Yeah, it's just a <laughs> dot .com, right. All right. We also got Will com. Fly from Will Fly PPG. Uh, he is going to be building up that spinning wheel of winning things tonight. So make sure that you say hi to Will Fly because we are going to be giving away a Fly My PPG t-shirt, a Vortex Aero travel mug, and a ton of stickers. So make sure that you say hi to Will Fly from willflyppg.com. Anything uh, new on your channel, Will? Not yet, but I'm so freaking close. So yeah, stay tuned. It'll, I'm, I'm probably going to be taking a little trip here in the next week. So my plan is to have it done before then. Excellent. Yeah, just Excellent. the tip. What is it? 7.0. Oh, man, up to 7.0 already. <laughs> That's awesome. We also got Wind Pirate PPG in the house. Woot, woot. How you doing, buddy? Doing good? Excellent. I put you on mute for uh, a second. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, this this microphone picks up every little movement that's around me. But no, doing great. Excellent. Good to have you here. And uh, we also got Mike Carter. Mike Carter is the is the man of the, the hour. We're going to be actually chatting with him for about an hour. We're going to be spinning the wheel about a half an hour in and then an hour. And then we're going to be talking for a little bit after the show. So make sure you guys stay here for the entire hour and a half. Mike Carter, welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you having me. It's, uh, Absolutely. It's 158 of these and going. So congratulations. You guys well, have been really rocking it so appreciate uh appreciate the time you're giving us thank you yes that's right this is four years in 158 this episode 158 and we just keep on going it's just amazing all the time but mike uh, for those of you out there that uh, may not know mike mike tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into paramotoring um so i've been a fan of aviation my whole life i was one of those little kids that my parents had taken us um my brothers and sisters down to Florida at a young age. And I was the, the sibling that was fighting for the window seat of the airplane. And to this day, I'm six foot one and a half or two. And uh, depending on the day, and uh, I still fight for the window seats. And uh, um, as I grew older, um, I was looking for a way to get into aviation. And uh, I would look at everything from the Zodiacs with the fixed wing on it to, uh, to actually starting getting my own private pilot's license, which I had about 27 hours logged in when I decided to walk away from it, which I, I really, quite frankly, kind of regret, but I was spooked at the time, probably not mature enough to do it, and uh, before my instructor took me for a taxi for run-up and saying that your airplane getting out of it, I decided to uh, to walk away from it, which for whatever reason, good, bad, and different, um, I still think about and think about getting back to, so we'll see. But uh, I ran across paramotoring. Actually, I ran across paragliding at, when I was on a uh, 10-year wedding anniversary trip in Switzerland. Both my wife and I decided to take a, uh, a tandem paragliding flight, and it literally it changed me. It was, it was absolutely something that, to me, I still remember just as vividly as if it was yesterday. And that was so it, cool. What year? What year was that? 10 years. Oh God, 10-year wedding anniversary. That had to have been it's now been 25 years <laughs> very wow. cool you do the math um but yeah so 16 years ago um i guess but i loved it so much that i looked at the instructor when we landed and i'm like when can, can we do this again can we do this like literally when can i sign up to do this and i looked at my wife i'm like do you want to do this and she's like you know what i think i'm going to try hang gliding 
And I knew right then and there that she didn't have the same visceral experience that I did with it. And sure enough, we signed up the next day and ran off a mountain in Grindel, Grindelwald, Switzerland. And when I came back, um, obviously life gets busy and there was nothing that uh, we could jump off early in Michigan that allows you to paraglide. There's some dunes on the western, northwest side of the state, but you know they're not practical and it's very hit and miss. But uh, I was sitting on the beach five years um, past that event and uh, we're over at my parents' place in Florida and two power paragliders go by you know, about six inches off the breaking waves. And I literally got up out of my chair and started running down the beach trying to catch them to find out what they were. And uh, it turns out they were paramotors. Um, I did some research and again, life gets busy. Five years went past that. And uh, on January 1 of 2015, I had some change in my business. Um, my surgical device business is just because of Obamacare. And I went from literally an 18 hour a day job down to a zero hour a day job. Um, and I basically started looking into getting my instructor, uh, getting, um, going down to Florida and being trained. And I found a gentleman, Don Jordan down there. And so on February 15th, 2015, I went down and, and started my training. I was down there for eight, nine days and, and, uh, got my flights in and came back here to Michigan and the gear sat there on my foyer until I could start flying again in April. That is so awesome. And you owned your, and you have your own school up there, right? I do now. Yeah. So we, I started the uh, Fly My PPG back in 2017, I believe it was. So it was two years prior um, after uh, my first flights. But man, I, I tell you, I didn't actually, I closed on an apartment, on an investment property. So I became a landlord for the first time on January 2nd, 2015. So I lost a <laughs> surgical device business that was 18 hours. And I gained a one hour, two hour job that was um, landlording. When I got back from training of PPG, I said to my wife, I said, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to learn how to fly these butt fans and I'm going to learn how to become a landlord. And so literally for two years, all I did was eat, breathe, sleep PPG. I mean, it was, it, it became a, a large, large, large portion of me in my life and still is for that matter. But so about two years into it, my buddy said to me, we we're down for breakfast. And they said, you know, you should consider being an instructor. And I hadn't even thought about it. And so I noodled the idea for a while and what it looked like. And uh, and uh, I decided to go ahead and, and uh, get back in or do that for the fact of uh, I made pretty much every mistake that there is in the book. And uh, I was a bad, bad pilot when I started. And uh, I just uh, I just didn't know what I didn't know. and. Uh, and it would, you know, I experienced quite a bit of uh, mistakes and broken equipment and learning lessons and all that good stuff. But eventually I finally got it. And uh, when I did, I felt that I had enough uh, to give back to the community to kind of help them in their journey of the sport. So isn't it nice that when you learn or when you first learn and you think, you know what, I'm not going to butt land. I'm not going to sit too soon. I'm not going to turtle. Same with me, the first five flights, I think I did all the things I swore I wasn't going to do. But when you have your school now, Mike, now you know what you can tell your students. Like, look, you know, this just this this happens and don't worry about it. We're going to get through it and we're going to make sure that you don't do it. Or if you do do it, it's not totally catastrophic. Right. Right. Uh, so so how long you've been actually instructing now? So and, this is uh, going into our sixth year of doing it. Six. Years. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, it's been good. We've got a uh, the place that we do this at is Fly My PPG. I literally I kind of call it the the PPG Wonderland or Oasis. Um, it's six. It sits on ninety two acres. Um, it's all grass strip runways, two thousand feet north, south, east, west. It uh, uh, we have a hangar on site where we actually uh, it's a four sided hangar. So two of the sides are rented out by guys that are flying ultralights, and then Two of the sides are rented out by us for for uh, doing demonstration purposes as well as um, you know doing classwork stuff, and it gives you that outdoor feeling. And then we actually literally have a three bedroom, two bath house that sits on site as well. So students that are commuting or that are from far away can stay there, and it really truly um, works works well in that environment because my instructor, myself, Bob Harris, 
we actually stay on site the entire time that the students are there. So we'll actually come in a couple of days early, just make sure everything's you know, good and ready to go and cleaned up. And, you know, we're all dialed in for the students to arrive, but we're there from the time that they get there until the time that they leave. And so, so yeah, so it really makes a, a cool kind of um, uninterrupted PPG uh, boot camp, if you will. But it's not really a boot camp. It's more of a just a camp. <laughs> so, right. Absolutely. Uh, Will Fly, is there any uh, questions in the chat or any questions on the panel before we continue? Not in the chat. So if you guys got any questions for Mr. Mike Cotter, just post them in the chat. We'll get right to them. Um, I'm kind of intrigued, man. I mean, you, so you had you said yeah. 26 hours of uh, yeah, it's a private pilot. Yep. Well, I mean, the nice thing about that is you pick it up 20 years later and you still get to count those hours. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, so there's that, right? <laughs> yeah. But um, I've had a chance to fly since then um, several times. Actually, I've, I've flown with Travis Burns a few times and I've got uh, a couple of local friends that are fixed wing pilots as well. So I've flown with them and um, you pick it up pretty quick, but I would definitely, you know, for some reason, I feel as if that or for me personally, that fixed wing uh, flying it would be more unsafe than the PPG flying. And maybe it's because you're going so low and slow with the, the paramotor flying compared to, you know, getting up in a Cessna 182 or something when you're freaking hauling balls and <laughs> yeah. not a whole lot of room for mistakes. It, it's definitely a different animal. There's no question about it. But your story, I don't think, is all that unique because I've heard quite a few times that people, they started their, you know, getting their license and then they flew a paramotor and then all of a sudden, you know, no more interest in the aviation, the general aviation. Right. So, uh, and I can't remember who it was. Uh, he's a paramotor pilot. He's, he's got a kid and the kid wants to become a paramotor pilot too, but he also wants to beca become a pilot. And he said, okay. I'll pay for your paramotor training, but you have to become a pilot. For, you have to become a general aviation pilot first because he didn't want it to mess up with, you know, he didn't want to scratch that itch too early. And then all of a sudden the kid's not interested in flying general aviation. So, Well, that's kind of why I haven't jumped back into it at that as well is because literally the paramotor, it fulfills all my needs as far as a pilot is concerned. Yeah. Um, I've trained, geez, hundreds of pilots now and i would say good maybe i don't know i'm not even put a percentage on it but a lot of them are commercial pilots or of course they're private pilots and every single one of them have said this is the kind of flying that i thought or i dreamt of when i started getting into aviation that low and slow visceral smells and um oh i got kicked off no, no, he's just sharing okay. the screen. I got gotcha. you. Um, that uh, that they wanted to experience, you know, when they got into it, and uh, and so I can see that as far as uh, becoming a, a private pilot, that you're definitely going to want to go that route first before becoming a PPG pilot. So yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I I uh, wanted to get back into aviation myself in some form or fashion, so that's kind of my story. And uh, yeah. Like, like you, it has scratched all those itches. So fortunately, because yeah. airplanes are very expensive to rent now. <laughs> right. Are Dude, you that is the coolest logo. Oh, man, thank you so much. That's kind yeah. of it. I spent a lot of time working on that and trying to, you know, get something that, that kind of fits um, the way, I guess we are. It was a little bit of inspiration came from the Aviator, their first original logo. And yeah. as, uh, we used to be one of their alliance members, and when we started our school, um, that was the logo that they had. And so I do have to give a little credit to those guys, uh, kind of inspiring that. But, cool. Yeah. Were you um, so, pretty much self self trained? I guess. No, no I trained with Dan Gordon. I don't know if that name rings a bell to you guys, but he was one of the original members um, that started the US PPA, and uh, he. I don't know if I don't think he's flying. I saw him about a year and a half ago. I stopped over at his house and uh, he's the, he would have been or still is the oldest foot launch pilot in the world, I would imagine. I think he's 84 now. Wow. So, yeah. And so he, he he was one of the originals that um, did the uh, what was the Florida flying at the compound? There was a name for it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I'll, I'll think of it, but I know what you're talking about. On the West Coast? It was right, basically, um, yeah, so, yeah, it was by Palm, Palm Bay, and that's where that's... Don had trained. He trained at the compound. Okay. And that's where that's I learned coast, yeah. actually how to fly. I can't believe I can't. Stephen Adair was part of that whole thing that he had passed, and in memories of him, they put together a flying, and I apologize, it's escaping me, but Don Isn't that to... fun and son? No, no, no. Um, no. Shucks. Anyways, and it's not wings over winter. That was aviators, but regardless. So Don is still actually he built a house right outside of the compound, and uh, he was training still up until probably a year and a half ago. I just lost touch with him in the last year and a half, so I'm not sure if he is or not. But well, Don uh, Slow Day says Don is the man. He is still flying. Oh, awesome! Good. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, he's he's uh. And he's an amazing pilot, and his pedigree of aviation is second to none. He was one of the original, you know, test pilots in the Navy and stuff. And then he was a captain. I don't want to say uh, with who. I believe it was American, but I don't, I'm not remembering that for sure. But he was a captain for years and years and years. And then he started teaching PPG. And so I found him um, uh, just doing my research down in Florida in the time that I wanted to do my training and he was available and so I, I jumped on it immediately cool absolutely yeah. awesome shout out to serenity island out there uh that's where we're going to be going this next week hey mike uh for those that don't know or haven't been to your school or maybe is thinking about going to school and it's up north uh tell us a little bit about uh, what the student uh, expects when they come in um, how everything works and how long are classes? Yeah, so we run a pretty strict curricul curriculum of uh, uh, work from now we've shortened it because I've limited the amount of students that we have. Um, we typically bring the students in there for six to you know eight days. And usually the only reason they're staying longer is because of the weather anomaly or because the weather is amazing and we're all staying there and flying together. But um, it's a full curriculum that we have uh, a full ground school, seven different classes that we do um, covering everything that there is in aviation from FAR 103 to airspace to motor maintenance to wing design, you name it, et cetera. Um, we're up in the morning early out kiting and ground handling. And uh, when their skills show proficiency, we start to move to motors, putting them on their backs, doing motor stem. Um, we actually have a... Uh, a setup there that's off of a, if you will, a swing set. We actually sit them in the motor, uh, give them the ability to feel what it feels like with throttle control, bring the, the motor all the way from, you know, zero to full, from idle to full power. We, uh, we run it, uh, their first flights, if you will, through that sim, exactly what it's going to sound like, what they're going to hear from us, what their expectations will be, um, so that when it comes to actually getting them ready to do their taxi practice and first flights that they've already seen and heard everything that they're going to usually encounter as their first line. We typically are flying them, I would say the afternoon of the third day, if not the fourth on the morning, but that's all based on their proficiency and what's happening. Um, prior, when we had three instructors, we would do six students. And in a seven to 10 day course with six students, a lot has to go right and timing and, and making sure that everybody gets the right reps for like towing and uh, making sure that they get enough attention for kiting. And so basically um, it became a little stressful if, to say the least. And so we're under not only a time crunch, but we're also, you know, have these students lives in our hands, you know, getting them up and showing them their first flight. So so you can imagine with six students under that type of time crunch, how much, how many moving parts there are and how quickly you have to, you know, just kind of get them in line. Now we were able to do it and do it very successfully and efficiently, but I found that now with the two instructors, just Bob and I, we started out doing four students and worked out very well. It was actually uh, very enjoyable. But doing two students for a class like that, oh my God, it's so much more fun. It's so much more relaxing. You get to know your students so much better. Um, it's, it becomes more of a personalized experience 
with them. We can actually personalize the, the course for them as well, based on you know, how everybody's time frame works. So I've decided, well, we started kind of implementing it last year. And this year on my schedules, I've basically scheduled out which classes we're doing two students and which classes we're doing four. And about 60% of them were just doing with two students and the last 40% were doing with four students. But by the time they leave, they're proficiently fine. They know when, when, where, how, uh, what time of the day, you know, the rules and regs to fly, and they can literally leave our classes, you know, to fly any paramotor that's out there. Now we offer a lot of variety of paramotors as well as um, a lot of different wings. So I don't have any, um, well, I guess, alliance with just one manufacturer of either. I truly let the student and I sit down and talk and Bob to discuss their options based on really, quite frankly, their skill level, their future flying ambitions and what they're trying to you know, become as a pilot, which they probably don't know at that time. But more importantly, getting them into safe, reliable equipment that fits their budget. And, uh, and so by partnering with a lot of different manufacturers, we've been able to accomplish that for them. It sounds like you just answered uh, 555's question, do you train on your own equipment? So you have many different uh, manufacturers and wings. I also saw trikes there too. So um, I, I assume that you do trikes and tri trike transitions too? Yep, yep, we have for sure. Um, trike transition is, is a pretty simple process, quite frankly, as long as the, uh, the student that's coming to us has a good understanding of ground handling and being a foot launch pilot, you probably do. Um, so the transition process is really, it's more of just a setup and a mindset and a difference of when you can fly and can't fly. But um, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty quick, quick course and transition to do that. Brand new pilots that want to uh, trike, um, we recommend that they bring their own trike um, just because there's I have a few different trikes. We do have a few different trikes that are there, but they're used for tandem purposes. And I don't want to um, teach a new student or have a new student just jump on my tandem um, rig to go and, and try to train on his first first trike situation. Even though we've, we've taken the student exactly to where they need to be, we've seen some mistakes happen. And uh, the mistakes, quite frankly, um, on a trike, they're not as forgivable as they are in a foot launch. Um, you know, when you can roll a trike or you get that trike in a situation where there's a little more wind and gust and they're not turning the appropriate way and it blows them over. And so you probably know that if you're training a trike as well, Sean. So Absolutely. Yeah, we have uh, three light trikes and we're getting another uh, larger trike uh, this next week, too. So, yeah, yeah I, I totally understand as far as, you know, um, uh, it's not it's not as forgiving as foot launch but uh a lot of people that come in they seem to have you know bad backs or bad knees um they want to foot launch but it just seem doesn't seem like they're going to be able to so being able to you know get them out there and put them on a trike sounds good uh what kind of trikes do you recommend for students when they first come in if they want to only do trikes um you know what at this point in time i i really don't make a recommendation for them um other than we'll sit down and talk. We've got a good relationship with Fly Products with Travis Burns over at One Up Adventure. Um, they, you can't go wrong with them, but you know we've used the retractable trikes. We've used um, um, the Parajet trikes. We've used pretty much everything that's out there in the industry, but it really depends on that student and what they're looking for. Um, you know, some like them larger with a little, you know, more protection where we're dealing with the, uh, the, the parallel or the pair jet trikes. Um, but it all, I mean, trikes can be pretty pricey when you get up there in some of the larger units that are available. We're talking, you know, 18, $20,000. So um, in Michigan, for whatever reason, good, bad, and different, we don't see a whole lot of population that is coming to us with that kind of budget to, to do that. So, um, but also it's my, the way that the, the student, the type of students that we've been training um, lately have been more of the younger foot launch group. And 
that's usually what's coming towards us in our way. Um, not that I discourage folks that are older or heavier or have bad knees. Um, I just think there's a mindset there. And it's also not something that we put the trike student in with the foot launch students, just because of the difference of the weather and when you can fly those students. Um, we ran into a couple of situations where the weather was good for a foot launch pilot, but it wasn't good for the trike student. And unfortunately, you know, the trike students watching everybody else fly and they're not able to do it yet just because the winds aren't low enough and conducive enough for that training portion. And there's, you know, kind of, I guess a little bit of some jealousy that happens. And, and it's hard of us as the instructor to say, I'm sorry, you can't, you're not going to fly. All these foot launchers, yeah, they're flying right now, but no, you can't. And so we, we separate the two now in different classes. So, okay. so I have a whole lot of trike training, if you will. Gotcha. Okay, well, that makes sense. <laughs> we um, do one all situation, so. Right. <laughs> well, we are going to be doing the spinning wheel of Winnie things, folks, here in just a moment. So in about four minutes, Will's going to be uh, putting the spinning wheel on at 730. Uh, also, too, it looks like we got a question in the chat. So if, uh, Will, you got a, a question from James? I do, yeah. James wants to know if you, tra if you train year-round in Michigan. No, I don't. Um, our official season kicks off at the end of April and runs through the beginning of October. Um, just the weather is so unpredictable for trying to get students in. Now I have done a few one-offs here and there, just from standpoint of today, it's completely viable. I flew this morning. Um, I flew last night as well, and it's gonna be 60 degrees here tomorrow or Wednesday rather. Yeah. And so, but that that is such an anomaly that it just doesn't happen. and. I prefer to have students that come in and I can keep it fresh on their minds. I don't want a week or two weeks to go by where they leave us and then come back. And quite frankly, you're having to retrain all the skills and levels that you had already previously you know, gave to them. Sure. I've given wings to guys to take home into practice and um, given them certain criteria as far as wing conditions and don't exceed it. And these are your maximum minimums and go out and practice so that when we see each other, you'll be that much further ahead of the game. Well, of course, those wings just sit in the garage and, you know, they don't do anything with them. And so that can be a bit frustrating. So unfortunately, no, I used to go down in to Florida um, and train with those guys and uh, with one up adventures and, and tag team with those guys. But um, right now it's just not working out. I've had a couple of things that I, you know, business wise that I've been trying to take care of on my, on uh, my other part of my life. And, uh, and so, no, but I, plus I like to travel and I just got back from Saudi Arabia doing the scout trip and I'll head down more than likely down to Florida or somewhere warm for the next you know couple of months and enjoy flying on my own. That's kind of my personal time, but, I don't but know. Like, Completely out of the question to do that. Depending, it's all on a case by case situation for winter training. But I, well, I understand too. It's kind of cold up there, and you need a break also. Um, so, so you guys, uh, we're going to be spinning the wheel here in just a moment. Uh, Pair mom is going to say hi to everybody on the spinny wheel. And uh, are you ready to do that, uh, Miss Linda? You're on mute. You know that, right? You put yourself on mute. Okay. Unmute yourself. There you go. Oh, there I am. And we'll be talking about the your that was an exciting trip. It sounded like we'll be talking about that a little later on. Uh, yeah. Right after right after the spinning wheel, we want to hear about your trip to Saudi. It sounds absolutely you gotta, amazing. You gotta do spinning wheel. Gotta do the spinning wheel. So Mike is going to give away one of his uh, one of his T-shirts. We also got a Vortex Aero travel mug, and we got a lot of stickers that we're going to be giving away today. So we're going to be spinning the wheel, spinning the wheel, spinning the wheel. Yeah, so, can you see that? No, uh, it's, it's only half partial half right wheel. Now. <laughs> Let me see half of the spinning wheel. Hold on, we'll get her. So for those of you that are listening to the show, if you want to come here and actually be part of the live show and have an opportunity of winning something live, I see um, 
I see a lot of people on here, which is awesome. Uh, you will be able to be in the spinning wheel of winning things. But if you can't, that's no problem at all. One of the things that you can do is go over to paramotorarkansas.com. Get, get yourself a free account. Make sure you have your mailing address in there. And what we do is uh, throughout the month, we'll just uh, spin our own wheel with the people that are on paramotorarkansas.com. And you'll just get something in the mail for free. You'll be like, what, what is this? Why do I get this? It's because we just give away free stuff. So make sure you go over to paramotorarkansas.com. Get that free account, and you might get something in the mail for no reason whatsoever. All right, Linda, go ahead and say hello to everybody on the spinning wheel of many things. Okay, as long as I don't, like, uh, kill the names here. Okay, welcome, everybody. We got um, my, my cat. My kitten's like, what's going on? Um, we got Scott and Angela Garland. We got Slow Days. Hey, Slow Days. Michael Jasper in the house. Susan Ray, what's up? Bill H in the house. Brian Franz, Bonnie Franz. Hi, cool couple. Andrea Ro Rosano. And we got Angela Preslick. Hello, darling. Tony Rosano. <laughs> Mr. Vegas. We got run into the sky orange. Yes. Flying Flamingo Jade. What's up, Flying Flamingo Jade? Serenity Island. Hi. And Mr. Dana 54, Para Ninja, Kanuk America, James in the house, PPG, the other Nick, A Lines, and Lift Paramotor. Welcome, welcome. 555. We got Kramer. I think that's Linda Kramer in the house. Hi, Linda. We got uh, Dewey's. Hi, Dewey's. Love ya. Kelby Cox. Welcome, John Wayne Cowboy, and we got Mad Sloper. What's up, Mad Sloper? We got another name just rolled in the house. You're fading out, Linda. Jumper fly. <laughs> I, 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 it sounds like it sounds like you're covering your microphone or something when you're getting close and looking. What was that last name, Linda? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's uh, Semper. I'm trying to see the last name. Semper Fly Dallas, and then James Bevilles in the house too. Hi, James. <laughs> yeah, man, and I got your back, Matt Sloper. You're on there now. Excellent. There we go. All right. So good luck, everybody. So that that's everybody on the in in there. So what Will is doing now is uh, he is shuffling the names. Uh, we we don't want anyone to think that anything is rigged. Um, however, I do owe, uh, Bonnie Franz, like a bucket of stuff when she comes over here and trains in April along with her husband, Brian. So, um, <laughs> do we have Walter in the house? Walter's not here. So good. Nothing's going to Australia. Whew. <laughs> I'm still paying off that second mortgage to send all that free stuff to him. All right. All right. You ready? Ready when you are. All right. I'm going to pick uh, Dewey Milstead. Sounds like Lyft Paramore might get it, too. What do you oh, think? Yeah. That? But I, I don't know. You know, Serenity hey, Island just jumped on here. So. All right. Getting close here. here. We got the long spin. Slowing down a little bit. Past Brian Franz. Susan Ray or Kramer, it looks like. I think it's going to be Kramer. It looks like it's going to be Kramer. I know. Susan, Susan Ray. Ray. Yay. Congrats. So, uh, Susan Ray, um, make sure that you have an account, a free account over at paramotorarkansas.com and you have your mailing address there. Just text me and let me know what you actually. Um, let us know in the super chat, what do you want? Do you have an opportunity to get a really cool Mike Cotter Fly My PPG t-shirt? She a has one. Does she? Oh, yeah. She trained with us uh, her first uh, course down in uh, in Florida. In oh, do, do you want a second one? Or you can get a Vortex Aero travel mug. Or you can get a bunch of fun, cool stickers from ClaireProptv.com. Uh, 
let us know in the super chat congratulations that's always fun to win something now we got a couple more spins too so whatever you want you get the you you get to let us know in the super chat what you want what does she want susan i'll give you like a couple seconds what i'm just gonna move on <laughs> feeling the pressure <laughs> but, but as, soon, as soon as you let us know then then we're just gonna go ahead and go on to the to the guest again so, we so can what were the stuff. choices again so the torque choices are a cool mike cotter fly my ppg t-shirt or a vortex arrow travel mug hasn't been used well maybe no it's, it hasn't been used and we got a ton of different type of stickers that we're going to give away from clearproptv.com. Hey, what do you got, Linda Anderson? Looks like you got one too. Three, four. Uh, yes, I did. I love it. I always use it on the show to represent. There you go. Represent. Yes. yes. Yeah, please. Uh, um, I have to learn like the microphone thing. So I, I just, I get so excited. You know me. It's like, ah, so if I just sit back like this and talk, then I'm not muffled. Is that the, is that what it is? Yeah, it's better that way. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know what happened, but it muffled up, which which was weird. But <laughs> you never you know you should know by now when you're when I'm on the show here, you just never know what's gonna fly out of my head. What you know? <laughs> Hopefully nothing I, flies I have, out your head. That, I mean, the one night I had the green the cat knocked the green screen over my head on live TV, and you know. It's all on Monday. It's all day. It's all <laughs> fine. Did, did, did Susan let, her, let us know what she wanted? No? All right. So, Susan, you can always uh, text me. Let me know what you uh, want. Um, however, because we got another spinning wheel coming up, we kind of need to know what you want because the next person, if you don't say anything, they get first choice. So if you want first choice, you better put in this in the super chat. All right, back to Mike. Man, you uh you've traveled all over the place. You have flown all over the place, but the last place that you went to, I want to hear all about. You went to Saudi Arabia. Please tell us about that. How did you get there? Uh what kind of trip was it? And tell us all the cool details. Yeah. So um actually Hey, Will, I don't know if you want to play that video first. Yeah. I don't know if that's kind of on top. Brian Holtland, I traveled with him and got to give him a little shout out. Um, he is he is hell bent on making some of the best videos that people have ever seen. And actually, quite frankly, he's really starting to uh, hone his, his craft in. And so if you haven't subscribed to his channel, I highly recommend doing so because he is going to start putting out some pretty pretty amazing quality but this is just a real uh, quick clip of the beginning of kind of what most people see about or think about when they hear about Saudi Arabia I think Brian did a nice job capturing it so Will if you could play that clip yeah. real quick fly Saudi Arabia here we go mission of Jamal he shook to you a frequent critic of the Saudi regime Inside of the Saudi consulate, the investigators trying to find out what happened to the country. Also rattled by Saudi Arabia and yeah. Iran. In one of the biggest mass executions in decades, Saudi Arabia Saudi executed 81 men. You know, there's probably a lot of stuff in the media that doesn't portray Saudi Arabia in a positive light. I would say, give it a chance. I think you'd be surprised. Cool. Yeah. That was pretty cool. It's, uh, it was kind of the way that we both felt in the beginning about Saudi. And we were both nervous. So we both had some pretty lengthy conversations about it. And the gentleman that you saw there asking for you to give it a chance, he was the guide. He's Shihab. Um, Shihab is a half uh, Saudi, half American. And he met Miro from Scout Aviation. He, they've now changed the name from Scout Paramotor, Scout Aviation. But um, he had met Miro on one of uh, the Iceland trips. And Miro and him had kind of hit it off. And with Shihab's background, in aviation and tour guiding. Um, he kept, uh, I guess, knocking on the door of Miro to say, you gotta start, you gotta come here to Saudi. You gotta do a trip here, it's amazing. 
And we would be like, ah, we've flown the desert. You know, we know it. There's a whole bunch of sand and sand dunes. And that's great. But, you know, we're looking for something a little more adventurous, a little more, um, you know, scenic. And so um, Shia went to some of these locations that we flew at, which are 1,200 miles away from his house, and put together a clip with another gentleman named Bastion. And the two of them documented it and sent uh, Miro the, the vision of what they had for putting together a Saudi trip. And Miro immediately jumped on it and said, that is absolutely unbelievable and nothing that I expected. And quite frankly, that whole trip, there wasn't a thing that happened that was the way that I would feel that some Americans portray Saudi Arabia. The people couldn't have been nicer. The terrain couldn't have been more beautiful and more diverse. Um, the, the flying there was absolutely spectacular um, to a point of like, you felt like you're on the moon at some times. You're flying over volcanoes. You're in places that with a combination of say, Sedonia, um, of Utah, Mineral Basin, of, you know, um, I guess the lushness of some of the southern regions of Arizona, all put together in one spot over one flight. And it was just magical. And the fact that it was so, I guess, people didn't know what or who um, paramotoring or these pilots were all about. It's the first time they're ever seen it. It's the first time that there's ever been places that have been flown in that region. And so every time we would land, the sheep herders and their um, children and families would literally bombard us and just come out of the woodworks of nowhere, of nowhere, and just want to learn what is this? You know, obviously not speaking English. And that's why Shiab was such an invaluable portion of this trip is just the translation process. Some certainly in some of the larger city, um, there weren't there wasn't much of a language barrier, but um, you get outside of that where we were in camping areas and villages, it was certainly there was a language barrier. But they were all interested to a point that they were shaking our hands, they wanted to hug us. I mean, they would just grab you like one arm wrestle you, show how strong they are. I'm talking like little boys, 12, 13 years old, having fun. I mean, just unbelievable, unbelievably engaging people. And um, I think one of the reasons being is the, uh, the Saudi prince had really is putting an effort towards tourism. And, um, you know, being that that has just opened up recently in the last like three and a half, four years, it really shows um, via the way that people reacted to Brian and I compared to maybe just Shia by himself. She even had said to us or mentioned, he goes, if I was here by myself with maybe another Saudi, we could get in more trouble than what it is with you guys being here as Americans. You're like my get out of jail free card. Because we are from obviously the Western world, whatever, they look at us as, hey, these guys are gonna go back and talk the story of Saudi Arabia. We wanna make sure that it's done in a positive light. And here I am today to say that there's it was unbelievable. Every place that we went, um, from driving into little smaller sectors that just had a supermarket and a gas station, you walk in there and there's a complete language barrier, but they welcome you with open arms. Um, we had a guy that we were in the bush, we were on motorcycles that had an orange and literally split up the orange and you knew that he didn't have anything else. He split up this orange and gave us all of the pieces of the orange until she I realized that hey let's give you know let me give back to you and he was so happy that he did because you know he, he gave away probably his lunch to us but that's kind of the spirit of the country it's called they actually have a phrase for it um it's called jude or it's actually pronounced good but spelled like jude j-u-d-e and it's Really, it's giving to others when you don't have anything other than what you've got on you to give. And um, just the hospitality there. I mean, you'd be going down the streets and people want you to come into their house, sit down and have tea 
and they want to serve you. And it's just it's just unbelievable. It's almost a a personal assault, or if you don't accept their giving. Um, but yet at the same time, you do, you want to, because you want to learn about their culture. So this was probably one of my favorite paramotor trips. Oh, that's really cool. But quite frankly, paramotoring wasn't the important part of it. It was the people that were there. It was the culture we shared. It was learning from Shiab, um, learning from Miro. If you don't know Miro very well, um, do yourself a favor and go on one of those trips and you'll, you'll learn. He is, uh, He's brilliant. He's funny. He's uh, he's an ambassador of this sport. He builds the Scout Paramotor, which is probably one of the you know leading brands um, out there, and really truly does it all for the right reasons. And his experiences and his travel history are just impeccable. Um, the way you know his adventure flying is just second to none out there, and some of the things that he's done and seen. And so picking his brain and spending you know that eight days with him was just phenomenal as well so tell us, tell us about some of the the sites that you flew and things that you saw and all yeah. that stuff yeah i think um probably the highlight for me um so there's a video out there it's about a four minute video it's on the scout page um when they introduce the trip but it's also um under bastion I apologize, I don't have Bastion's uh, last name in front of me, but um, he did a four minute inter or, uh, introduction video on the area of flying in Saudi Arabia. And what struck me was the volcanoes down in the Southern region, or actually it's kind of midway through the country, but um, I apologize. I can't pronounce J's and K's um, and Q's all in one, <laughs> one <laughs> word and stuff. Could you go, how could you? So I can't pronounce a lot of my apologize. Um, so I'm not going to, and I'm not going to bash them because <laughs> um, I have so much respect for them. But this area with the volcanoes was simply unbelievable. Um, now I've launched at Monument Valley, which is just under 6,000 feet, if not 6,000 feet. And we launched um, at 6,200 feet on sleeping on a volcano. And you go and you travel to see these calderas that they're just absolutely breathtakingly huge. And, you know, flying over those was probably one of the most spectacular sights. So we slept out on a volcano. So typically the average day is we would fly a site, um, relax, enjoy kind of the, the hangover of the flight, if you will, and share the stories. And then we'd get packed up. And we're talking about breaking down the paramotors, breaking down camp and loading everything up and driving to another spot and chasing the weather, if you will. But at the same time, um, there was a skeleton itinerary from Shiab of places that he knows and has flown in the past so that there was no real surprises or no mistakes that we're making. Because some of the train that you get into, were, it's big boy country and you need to you know, realize what the risk and reward is when you're flying in some of these areas. No, um, you said that you flew over volcanoes. They weren't active, were they? No. no okay. No, no. <laughs> That'd be a hell of a thermal. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> How often did they, so this was a pre-arranged trip, basically. So yeah, so Scout Paramotor, just like their Iceland trips, they're, they put on four back-to-back -back trips Matter of fact, the third one is right now underway. Um, so I'm not sure, sure if you're familiar with the the, uh, the Iceland trips, but they would typically bring, you know, six to 12 guys every trip, and they would do three or four trips in a row because when you're shipping that much equipment and gear and stuff like over, you only want to do it once on the front end and then return on the back end. And so that's the way they did it in Saudi as well as Miro shipped over six motors and all the other equipment that goes along with it. And then they're running four consecutive trips back to back and then they'll ship everything back. So did that answer the question? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, yeah. and Tony Marzano was asking about what the security was like, but it sounds like a lot of that was taken care of as far as getting your equipment over there. And we didn't need any, we didn't need any security. There wasn't any to have. It was Shiab having conversations with, you know, the locals, it wasn't needed. There wasn't any security that's needed. Now, 
Miro shipped all the motors over because that we were using Scout paramotors. It's a Scout um, adventure trip. So that's what it qualifies or falls under if you wanted to actually label it. Um, it would be the Scout Saudi Arabia adventure trip. And so we basically didn't have anything to do with that. Now, there is a fee for the trip, and I'm sure our fee covered you know, portion of that shipping cost for Miro because it's not cheap to do that. And there's not like Miro is making much money on these trips. He does it because it pays for his adventure, you know, and him having a good time, quite frankly. And so it also gives us some um, exposure to the Scout brand, but it also gives, you know, anybody that watches these videos or sees, you know, the Iceland trips, you know, Ryan Southwell doing his amazing photography and videography work but people see the brand and they associate it with adventure flying and so on and so forth so it all works in that regard but um so yes yeah, so their equipment basically we're flying their gear and we had a choice to bring over our wings which i chose to bring over my own personal wing because you don't want to switch up too much stuff you know for me to show up and fly a new wing on a new motor with a new reserve all put into one in component can it be done? Sure. But why? But why if it doesn't have to be? So I brought over two wings, actually. Brian brought over one, and uh, we flew our own wings. But um, Miro had the reserves there, you know, putting those on. And, uh, and yeah, so everything else was pretty much set. We'd go to the grocery store, we'd get food, and we'd cook out in the evenings, and then uh, um, just relax. Half of the trip was spent camping. So they had all the tents and you know all the the cold weather gear, if you will. Um, we just brought over our own personal sleeping pads, sleeping blankets, or you know sleeping bags rather, which I really lack on. <laughs> I found out the hard way. I woke up freezing a couple of the the northern portions of Saudi got down to like twenty eight degrees, <laughs> and. I realized at the very end of our trip that my sleeping bag was rated for like 45. <laughs> so, so I had some cold nights, but half the time you're in tents and half the time you were actually in hotels along the way. And so it was a good mix in that regard. You'd go to, you know, catch up on the internet and, you know, get a little Wi-Fi, you know, touch base the home and all that fun stuff. So, but we'd go to restaurants. Um, it was, like I said, Shiab having that, language barrier covered for us was just miraculous you know it was it was i wouldn't have done that trip number one if it didn't start off with the reputation of scout paramotor and miro and knowing him and you know seeing and watching him through the years i felt as if i did know him just through his videos without ever meeting so there was a trust factor there that hey i can throw Four thousand dollars to this guy that I've never heard of, have no idea who he is. I never have met him, and I'm throwing four thousand dollars into Saudi Arabia, and apparently supposed to meet up at noon on this particular day. Supposedly, <laughs> supposedly supposed to meet up. <laughs> some some guy named Shihab. <laughs> But, you know, faith and the trust in Miro and knowing what he you know, brings to the sport and the table, that brought the credibility. But as soon as you meet Shiab, I mean, all of that immediately goes away. As a matter of fact, it's really kind of a funny thing. I don't know if I should share this, but I'm going through that. First thing he did, he got up and he kissed me. <laughs> uh, That's not part of their culture. And I'm like, well, maybe it's part of their culture kissing on any side. <laughs> it was on the cheek. It was on the cheek though, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's just like, I want to see <laughs> no, no tongue, right? Gotcha. <laughs> hey, I got, I got a quick question. So you, you're saying that uh, you're throwing four thousand dollars. So is that what it costs to yeah. do the trip? Does that include the airfare, or is that yeah. separate? That's separate. All That's right. Separate. So, so the airfare is all on you to and fro, and then four thousand dollars for the trip. And the trip was how long? Uh, eight days. Eight days. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty nice. Knowing what I know, I'd pay double. Wow. Yeah. It must have been awesome. Yeah, I'd fly there. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Matter of fact, so as I mentioned, there's four back-to-back -back trips. And on the third or the second trip, so the trip immediately following ours, um, Judson was in that trip. I'm sure we all know that name. 
And uh, there was a spot open for that trip. Well, Brian and I were scheduled to go to Dubai. And one night <laughs> we just sat there and started asking about, hey, you know, what about that one open spot? Maybe, maybe I'll take it. And Brian's like, well, maybe, maybe I, I'll sacrifice going to Dubai. Maybe I'll stay here and you go to Dubai. And then we're like, kind of, we kind of agree that, hey, we're a team. We're sticking together. We're, we'll do it again some other time. But yeah, it's a place that uh, it was literally it's spectacular. Um, just places you're flying sometimes in dunes, sometimes over volcanoes, sometimes in um, canyons that had walls that are a thousand feet tall and just as further you went along in the canyon, the narrower it got, and narrower it got, and narrower it got. So you had to play your elevation right and climb in and out of those areas. But the floor bed was dried up bedrock. So there was always an out. Um, there was areas in Bajta, it's called. It was kind of our first stop. Matter of fact, ended up being our last stop as well. Um, just because it's real close and central to Tubuk, which is the area you would fly into and fly out of. And uh, we went back to it just because it was that spectacular. And uh, um, watch Brian's video. It kind of, he depicts it in a pretty good light, but we've been waiting for Miro and for Shihab to breathe a little air, Um, but they've got all the real footage and the filming and stuff like that. And so that's, going to be coming to us here pretty soon and Brian will be I know putting together a nice quality video and of course you know Miro with Scout Aviation they'll be doing some stuff as well and I guarantee Judson probably has some some unbelievable quality uh, material that he'll post as well but take a close look at at the place it's worth it Um, I know for a fact that they will do trips there again next year um, if not sooner but it's a seasonal thing just from the temperature standpoint there because it gets ugly hot (laughs) it sounds absolutely amazing tarna marzano asked if you were got uh, got to ride a camel but we'll have that answer in just a moment because we're going to be put up the spinning wheel of winning things here in just a moment because now susan ray said that she won lots of stickers so that's no problem so we have uh, a we still have a ton of stickers so if you want stickers that's no problem too but mike carter is going to give away a fly my ppg t-shirt uh what color was that uh we've got a couple of different varieties but um more than likely you're going to get a red one with our black and blue logo um i just placed an order for some uh black with some gray logos on if you want to wait for one of those they're going to be really sharp it won't take too long a couple of weeks to get them in but yeah you'll have your choice whatever you want Excellent. We're also going to give away a Vortex Aero travel mug. So just like Mike said, um, if you win the t-shirt, it might be a couple weeks. So, you know, just don't stay at that uh, mailbox, just waiting for that shirt to come in. It might take a little bit of while. All right. Uh, two minutes before we spend the spinning wheel of winning things. And I guess we have enough time to ask, uh, to hear the question. Did you get to ride a camel? Um, we were offered. But I said, I, I'm going to stick on my paramotor. I'm not going to get <laughs> my camel. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't try to ride a camel. That would have been so cool. Oh, I can't uh, it around the world. I'm not going to hurt myself on a camel. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain to your insurance company, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, we Literally, they're, they're there. They're, they're so approachable. They, they actually like little puppies. Well, big puppies. <laughs> yeah, well, um, like big spitting puppies, right? And they spit too? No. No, I mean, maybe they don't, they didn't spit at us. And the wild ones, literally, when I say wild, there's a sheep herder there. And that's it. Other than a sheep herder, they can roam around the country freely. Matter of fact, they cross roads. Like we hit uh, deer up here in Michigan, our cars, and um, they'll get in the roads. Well, guess what? You'll hit a camel <laughs> in the road because they just leisurely will cross road. But and in Australia, you, you hit a kangaroo, right? So it just depends on where you go. You get a exactly hit right. animals. Yeah, you would see the bones of a camel that had passed, and they're just monstrous. I mean, the heads are huge. But um, yeah, so we actually, the first day that we got there, we went to this place called Bajta, and we were just kind of waiting for the winds to calm down, and uh, and we we're just kind of getting familiar with the area. We we're picking out a camp, and literally, I turn around, and there's two camels that just walked up on us and they're just looking at us 
And Shiav goes, grab something to feed them with. And I think I grabbed some potato chips. <laughs> and I just held up my hand with potato chips. And sure enough, they just come right up and just gently, you know, nibble at them with not their teeth, but their gums, their lips. And, uh, you know, if you had some other stuff, they would stick around and, and then, you know, let you feed them. But as soon as you ran out of food or whatever, they didn't have it. They would just slowly walk away. I mean, it was just really, it was just, it was amazing. So, so I know that you do towing at your school. Have you ever done a camel toe? Oh, 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 that's, that's not good. <laughs> Nothing about that is good. Well, okay. I mean, you know, camels have toes, you know, cows have hoops, you know. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right. So, Will Fly, you ready to do the spinning wheel? Yes, I am. All what? right. Uh, I'll never trust a skinny chef. Shane's going on. Walter is in the house too, which means guess what, Sean? Uh, He's on the wheel. Wow. <laughs> He's on the wheel. <laughs> All right. That be uh and then um I did want to say something afterwards or whenever. Uh, let me pull this bad boy up if I can. Well, it sounds like you had an amazing trip over there, buddy. That sounds absolutely awesome. When's the next trip that you're going to take, Mike? You know, um, I've been, believe it or not, looking into working with Miro and seeing if we can't put together something in Africa. Wow. So you're going to, put, you're going to be putting together something, not Scout? I would help um, kind of point the directions of, so I've been doing some research on it. Let's just put it that way. But it would be under a Scout. The scout trip. I wouldn't do it without Miro. Matter of fact, uh, um, he has so much experience in this. Um, I would. There was no way that I would just try to pull something like that off on my own. I would want to learn. I'd want to apprentice. I would be there to help. But uh, for me to actually pull something like that off, no. I'd want the support of somebody that's got that background and that experience to do that. Now, yeah. Brian, I've actually decided that. Um, probably this October we're going to start doing some trips to uh to Utah just because I know that place at the back of my hand and um that would be something that could easily be done and managed with a small group so that sounds like way yeah. too much fun and you'd spend so much time you know taking care of the preparations and figuring things out that you really wouldn't be able to enjoy yourself you know Right. The thing about it, doing something like an Africa trip um, would require that I would go down there or go there a month beforehand and scout the area like Shihab did and Bastion did prior to us going to Saudi Arabia. Um, you're right next to Victoria Falls, the place that I'm looking at, and there is a community that's already there, an ultralight community. And so you would definitely need to develop those relationships and um pick off of their experiences of where and when and rules and protocols and everything else that goes along with doing something like that. Because the last thing you want to do is fly into a country that, you know, you're bringing customers in and you're shut down because you didn't, you know, cross your eye or dot your eyes and cross your T's and get the appropriate protocols squared away. So, I like how he said when he's going, when he goes over there, he has to scout it out because he has to scout <laughs> out like that. That was good. Hey, uh, Linda, do you want to say hi to everybody real quick before we spin the wheel? And we're going to spin the wheel twice. Uh, somebody's going to win some stickers. Somebody's going to win uh, Vortex Aero travel mug. Somebody's going to win um, uh, Mike Cotter Fly My PPG t-shirt. So we're going to be spinning here. And uh, then we're going to be going into the after show where we're still going to be talking about paramotors, but we're probably going to end up uh, stop talking about 830 my time, which is central. I did have something I wanted to bring up, though. Oh, yes, sir. Go ahead, Will. No, I mean, after the spinny wheel or whatever. Okay. Um, so, but, but Linda was going to read. You going to read them, Linda? Okay. Do I All sound right, okay? Ahead. I'll just yeah, sit back ahead. here and say the, say the, oh. Yeah, uh, go oh, ahead. I, <laughs> <laughs> I like, really? For, for those like, of you that are listening to the show, uh, Will was, Fly uh, hit, the, hit the shuffle a million times, so you couldn't see the names. <laughs> I was never a speed reader. That was awesome. All right. I, I was a speed racer. Just ask my mom, <laughs> but I'm not, I was never a speed reader. Okay. We got uh, Michael Jasper, A-Lines, 555, Matt Sloper, Semper Fly Dulles, 
Para Ninja Slow Days, Scott and Angela Garland, Serenity Island, Flying Flamingo Jade, Lift Paramotor, Mr. Dana 54, Walter Priori. What's up, sugar? Never trust a skinny chef, Shane, Shaney. John Wayne, the cowboy, Bill H in the house, James Bill, Bonnie France, Brian France, Angela Presley, Susan Ray, EPG, the other Nick, Tony Marzano, Paul Marzano, Kelby Cox, hey Kelby, Dewey's Milstead, the lovely Dewey's, and Andre, Andres Rosano, James, Jeremy, hey, what's up, Jeremy? Ryan, our rides, Can Cook America, and I probably ruined that run. And run into the sky, orange, and then Kramer, which I think it's Linda Kramer, the lovely Linda in the house. Yep. Oh. What's up, Andre Rosario? I, I want to know. I want to know how you did that shuffle so many times like that, and Bonnie and Franz still are together. So you know their marriage is really tight. It is. Uh, you can't even be cute. shuffled apart in the spinning wheel winning things. Yeah, <laughs> I do it again if it does it. that. Good right. luck, everybody. Uh, I split them up. Yeah. Oh, well. Do we get them no, all? They're still, no, we they're still together, aren't they? Yeah. It's weird, huh? I don't know. Yeah, that, that's a strong marriage. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. So, did you want to spin, or did you want to say what you wanted to say? Well, well? yeah, you know, uh, to, you know, real quick, um, there was an exchange between uh, I think Tony Marzano and I can't remember. I'm so sorry, but um, they were talking about uh, how it, it it's unfortunate how paramotoring is such an expensive sport, or or a uh, you know a rich man's sport but but really if you think about it it's it, it's not so much because paramotoring for a lot of people myself included is a therapy and you know therapy is expensive you know what i mean so when the when the why is strong enough the will will find a way and so just have to you know keep, keep that in mind and yeah i mean nothing worthwhile that i've ever had has has been inexpensive, you know, but it's been worthwhile and uh, it's something to keep in mind. And that great great to that, Will. Nice way to way to say that, Will. That's absolutely correct, and uh, that's how people should look at it, um, especially this sport in particular and aviation in particular. If cost and money is your main objection to do this, then maybe it's not the time right now for you. Maybe you should wait until it is you know, more so in your cards, but it has such more of a meaning and a, a life altering result than actually spending a dollar on something. The personal gratification that I personally get out of it, I swear to God, I call it my chapel in the sky. And yeah. it's, it's, it's a whole lot different than buying a car or buying a motorcycle or buying a new set of skis. For me, I walk away from like every single one of my flights and I feel better mentally and physically, just literally feel better. So Absolutely. I totally agree. I don't think so. Not it was me. Para Ninja who was bringing that up. So, yeah, right on Para Ninja. So. Hey, we'll fly real quick before you spin. I know that uh, you fly airplanes and paramotors. Now, what's the difference in cost? Just because, you know, they said that, you know, paramotors is the rich man's sport. Um, flying an airplane is a little bit more expensive. So tell me, if you took out your airplane and flew for an hour, about how much gas are you going to use in dollars? And how about if you fly a paramotor? What's the difference? Well, well, first of all, when you rent an airplane, and I haven't flown an airplane since I started flying paramotors because I found no, no need to. But uh, normally when you rent an airplane, you, you rent it wet. So if you rent an airplane for an hour, say it's 150 bucks, and that's probably on the cheap side now because it's been a long time, um, that's 150 bucks an hour. So gosh, two hours would be a prop, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, I mean, if, if you're looking at it, if the only reason, in my my opinion, that anyone should seriously consider uh, flying an airplane or learning to fly an airplane is a, it's just something that they've always wanted to do, and that's been one of their life goals. Or b, they want to you know pursue 
a career in aviation. Other than that, if, uh, uh, I mean, paramotors have it beat because most people, like like you were saying, Mike, they want to get into flying to experience the feel of flying. And kind of hard to do that when you're surrounded by a bunch of aluminum, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's true. And that being flying, said, it is a worthy goal. All right. I mean, general aviation is awesome and it's an awesome group of people. If you fly an Atom 80, then even your gas is even cheaper, you know, with the Atom 80 because it just barely sips that uh, gas. Yeah, there you go. You probably you could probably go fly for four dollars if gas is four bucks. You know, I mean you can fly for an hour, four bucks. A lot yeah. different than flying the airplane. All right. Ready when you are Mr. All right. I'm going to shuffle just a couple more times, and here we go. <gasps> Brian and, and uh, Bonnie broke up. What? I'm going to go with Kramer. Hmm. Michael Jesper. Um, Linda's waiting for the wheel I'm to stop. I'm going to say Mad Slow. I know. I just picked a name. Paraninja. <laughs> Serenity Island. Kangook America? Susan Ray? No way. No. Is it Mad Sloper? Uh, Mad Sloper or Bill H? Pretty close. Oh, oh it's going to be Bill God. H. It looks like oh, Mad Sloper. <laughs> did I call it or did I call it? I don't know. Did you call it? I did. I said Mad Sloper. Well, what does Linda win? <laughs> yeah, well, that's. Mad Sloper, you let us know in the super chat what you want. You have a choice of stickers, um, a Vortex Arrow travel mug, or a very own Mike Carter uh, or Mike Carter uh, Fly My PPG t-shirt. So let us know what you want. And obviously, if you get the, the travel mug, I'm going to throw some stickers in there anyway. So you let, you let us know what you want. Let's go ahead and spin the wheel again for whatever Mad Sloper doesn't want. Wait, that's three times in one show. I know. Last week, last week, uh, I think it was last week. I guessed Travis, and then Travis won. Woo! I'm glad. I'm glad that you're doing the uh, the shuffle. That way, no one can say it's rigged anymore. Tony Marzano can say. He'll say that. Shuffle. Tony Marzano. <laughs> He's awesome. Uh, I'm going to say Angela Presley. Hey. Fine for me. I'll say Tony Fine Flamingo. I already said it. Oh, Tony. 555. Run into the sky. Let's see. Who's going to do that? Who's going to win? Kangook America? Ooh, it's going to Jasper or John Wayne? The cliffhanger. Oh, my goodness. You know, if John Wayne wins, he's just going to give it to Bill H again. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> John Wayne. All right. <laughs> Hey, John, uh, if you want to, we can spin it again, or you can, you know, get what you want, or you can give it away to anybody you want to. It's totally up to you. Let us know, John. So let's go ahead and spin it one more time for some stickers. All right. So whoever this lands on, you get stickers. And if you already got stickers, well, you're going to get some more. Stickers are great. Everybody loves Hey, them. let's say Jeremy. I'm going to say flyintothesky.org. Woo. Run into the sky. Uh, yeah, run into the sky. Sorry. I think I think Linda said run into the sky orange. Yeah, she did. Well, I couldn't because it's, it's um yeah. Oh, my gosh. Look, it's run into the sky. Oh, right back to Bonnie Franz. Looks like we're going to put it in Bonnie, uh, uh, Brian's uh, bucket. Nope. It's going to go all the way to Semper Fly Dillis. Yes. Boop, boop. <laughs> Congratulations. Watching you guys do this, at first I'm like, why do they spin this wheel thing? It's weird. It's like these gifts aren't that great, but watching the reactions of just the three of you make it all worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like flying a paramotor. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so excited about this. I'm like, yeah, I get it. it <laughs> we need like the again. sound effect. We need a sound effect in there, like when they win, like you know, the crowd goes, ooh. We do. It is. Uh, just you guys are great. Just the sound effect. See, is that's why cute. you have me on the show. The PR has all these great ideas. <laughs> Did John Wayne say uh, spin again? Yep. All right. Did Matt Sloper let us know what he wants? What do you want, Matt Sloper? Because if you didn't, then whoever wins this one gets to pick first. 
Well, Semper Fidelis. Um, Semper Fidelis won stickers. Stickers, okay. So, right. so Mad Sloper gets first pick, but if we spin John Wayne's second spin, whoever wins, whoever puts their uh, the what they want first wins. So it's between Mad Sloper and whenever you spin. So Mad Sloper, you better uh, let us know what you want, or going once, going or, twice. Whoever wins this one, uh, Mad Sloper's not here, is what Tony Marzano said. He left the building. Let me see if I can see. Well, I mean, Sloper. in the chat. Did you leave the building? Looks like he did. Well, I tell you what, then let's go ahead and uh, spin it again for um for Matt Sloper went to eat. So let's go ahead and spin it again. Uh this is the spin from John Wayne. So this is John Wayne's um gift to whoever. And we'll okay. let them get the Fly My PPG shirt. And if Mad Sloper gets up with me this week, um, we'll send him the Vortex Arrow travel mug. That's fair, right? Yeah. You ready? I, ready I'm when... gonna say I'm gonna say Kelby. Yeah, you, you gotta wait till it starts. Oh, you're just shuffling. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, I forgot the rules. <laughs> it was like it was like it was shuffling. I thought I was spinning with all the names. <laughs> going you like that. Speak the name till I shuffle. Once again, if you're listening to this after the live show, go over to paramotorarkansas.com. Create yourself a free account. Make sure you have your mailing address. And sporadically throughout the month, we just it's randomly easy. send some stuff out easy. for fun. That's right. I'm going to say A lines. Or Walter. Walter, if you win, you get something digital. A <laughs> uh -huh. lines. A lines. Oh. Totally rigged. Totally, totally rigged. A lines. Congratulations, all you winner, winner chicken dinners. <laughs> right on. All right, so A lines, um, Mike. How how is A lines going to get up with you so he can? Uh... Actually, ironically, he just posted to me in the chat if I was going up to uh, Porchport this summer memorial. <laughs> <laughs> I am, but I'll I'll have him just uh, email me or reach out to me on Facebook, and regardless, we'll figure it out. So, all right, A lines, you hear that? So, congratulations, buddy. You want a t shirt? Yay. Well, Will, oh, you don't right. have anything to do right now, so we can do the thumbnail. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's do the thumbnail. That sounds good. <laughs> I thought better, we got to do it quick here. I mean, I got to be on, you know, I got to be on my game here tonight. <laughs> I don't have my, oh, wait a minute. I do have my glasses. Linda took off hers, and I'm taking it from her, and I'm putting it on me. There you go. I'm wearing Linda's. Okay. <laughs> and look, Mike is doing the same thing. Come on, Linda, put your glasses on. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 you know we can take a screenshot of this conversation before you take them <laughs> off and that's the screenshot with look at me, hey, look, arguing. will got will got his on come on linda i'm arguing, I'm arguing with the with the boss here linda, look look oh, everybody has, everybody has looking. their glasses on all right you ready go. all there right she goes. You look come, on, come, on, come on linda on. put them on come on everyone's waiting for you we'll put them on linda Oh my God! Yay! Bye. Bye. All Look right, everybody has glasses. All right. Okay. Yeah, One. they're gonna be all reflected. Oh. One, two, three. <laughs> there we go. Excellent day. I love it. Everybody finally got glasses on. Dude, oh, the pressure, the pressure. It only took four seasons, four years for you to do that. I'm traumatized. <laughs> That is awesome. Well, congratulations. So Susan Ray won some stickers. Congratulations, Mad Sloper. If you get up yay, with me, and you know that you did win. So get up with me. Text me at 501-747-3558. Let me know that you won and that you do want the Vortex Aero Travel Mug, and we'll send it to you. Uh, A-Lines won the T-shirt. Congratulations. Cool. T-shirt. And Semper Flydillis won some stickers, too. So make sure you get up with me, and we will send those out to you right away. Yes. Hey, Mike, right. are you going to Torch? Of course. Hey, okay, sa save me a shirt. Okay. It is, it is. <laughs> I can do that. 
Okay. Yeah, what size are you? Probably, I don't know how if they run big, how big they run, but probably just a small. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. okay. I will be there. Oh, I'm going to take awesome. my second tandem. Very cool. Yes, I know. Can you tell? I'm counting down the days. Is Eric? Is Eric? Uh, do you have it scheduled with Eric? Or who yes. You, uh -huh. you look, you're looking for a Sherpa. Yeah, taking the tandem with Eric and Jade. Awesome. So they're definitely coming up. Yep. I guess over for them, but good. So, so when is that fly-in? Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day weekend. Yep. I don't have a calendar or anything. What day is that? Do you know what that day that is? Monday. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you, got you got me. You yeah. got me, buddy. You got me. That it's was, a Michigan that? thing. That's how we say. Well, that was it. it's a Monday. It's a last, last right week. Right there, it's a Monday. Right, gotcha. Yeah, that's right. Right, right well, there, it's a Monday. Gotcha. I, yeah. I know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> right, right I'll there. Look, I'll look for that later. You got me. I, that, was, that was just too last good. Last weekend in May, Sean. Okay, May, and last week, weekend in May. I won't be able to make it. I'll be on our cruise uh, since we lost a couple of years because of COVID. My wife and I haven't been able to go on cruises, so we booked two this year. So we'll be gone nice. in the uh, first part of June, and um, then we're going to be going to Alaska this year. Also, anybody ever been to an Alaska cruise? I'm actually taking one this year as well with my father's turning 80 his 80th birthday and so we're going as a whole family up there. but no i've heard spectacular things so i i've not but looking forward when to when are you going i think sh they want to go in the summertime sometime they haven't oh, booked okay. it yet, but oh, they haven't be, booked it okay yeah it'll be sometime in the summer i was gonna say wouldn't that be neat if we booked the same cruise yeah <laughs> hey I've seen stranger things happen. I know. Uh, book, uh, bring a shirt, right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Back at you. That is awesome. So we just got a couple minutes left. It was really nice that you uh, came on the show, Mike. We appreciate you. Your stories were awesome. I can't believe how fast this time went. Uh, Will Fly, thank you so much for that. Uh, doing the spinning wheel, winning things, Paramom, everything that you do in the background, including telling it, you know, saying hi to everybody in the spinning wheel. We definitely appreciate you. Um, man, I I'm can't wait practice. for you. I'm going to practice. I'll, I'll just, you know, write down names on a paper and I'll practice, you know. Practice <laughs> <the name laughs> Go back on the video and then reread everything again, right? Yeah. Practice that <laughs> Run into the sky orange. There you go. I love it. That's awesome. Um, isn't that what it, that's what it was, right? No? Org, org, or org. Oh, well, the end of the O-R, it was like kind of, the screen was kind of cut know. off, Well. They got you too. Yeah, blame, yeah, blame it on me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, blame, we'll, we'll blame it on Mike, you know, because, you know, it's Memorial Day right there. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, a new fly in, fly for Gage in Bowling Green, Florida on uh, June 8th through the 11th. Check it out. It's an awesome site to fly. <sighs> See, everything went right around that cruise. I'm sorry, guys. I really wish I was going to do it on purpose, Sean. We all changed the script. I did. I didn't. Um, yeah. Man, There's this some. is great. Uh, for so those fun. of you that may know, and those of you who may not know, if you watch the video, the little trailer at the beginning of this uh, podcast, I'll be taking a uh, cancer patient down to Florida to do a tandem on a PPC. And while I'm down there, I'm going to be picking up a tandem rig also and uh getting my bfi from asc awesome you got your bfi from asc is that what i saw on your website mike i did yeah through uh travis burns and one up adventure kyle mooney yep those guys uh they do a rock star job with that so i'm not sure who you're going with but yeah it's it's great excellent well i had an amazing time talking with you guys um <laughs> Uh, been amazing talk with Mike. Mike, dude, you, your adventures are are crazy. That that's just amazing what you did. I mean, it sounds awesome, and I wish that we had more time because you went on more adventures than this. Obviously, since you've been flying since 2015. Yeah, quite a few. Um, but that's kind of how I what, the reason I got into paramotoring because I knew that it offered this kind of adventure travel and trips, and it's a portable machine. Why not take advantage of it and go travel with it? Especially so when you're going on these trips where, you know, Scout is 
giving you brand new stuff to to use in a different country. You don't have to bring your own. How awesome is that? That's very That's cool. awesome. Absolutely. And it's very accessible cool. to everybody. I mean, yeah, I, I did it and it's awesome, but so could you. And you could do it tomorrow if you wanted to and sign yes. up for this stuff. It's available to all of us. And I highly recommend taking advantage of it because they are tricks that really bring a deeper, richer meaning to this sport in every one of them that you do. So, yeah. and the skills will grow exponentially than flying around your local LZ every single flight, you know? Probably. What kind of skills do you need to, to have to go onto one of these flights? I mean, do you need to have like at least a PPG-1? Do you need to be flying for at least a year? I mean, is there any requirements? Yeah, so you would definitely want to be in the higher intermediate and above category. Um, you want to be able to take advantage of those, the flights that are there. Mm -hmm. And if you're there and you get there and the nerves are kicking and you're stumbling and, and you're missing flights because maybe your skills just aren't honed in and you're not, you know, current with your launches and landings, then you're going to miss out on a lot of the adventure. But, um, so you want to make sure that, you know, just for your own sake, that you're dialed in and you have a good understanding of what you're getting into as well. Um, just speaking with Miro on the the uh, differences between the Saudi trip compared to, say, an Iceland trip, mm -hmm. the Iceland trips, you know, you were putting up a little more risk as far as where the, the outs were on time, yes. whereas it always seemed very, very safe to Miro, he said, with the, the Saudi trip. There was always outs, there was always landing spots, even yeah. though some of the territory appears as if it's really extreme below us there's always a spot that we could have landed out so um just some differences there but so just do your research talk to others and do a really good you know understanding and introspective look at yourself and your skill level before you embark on something like that but you know intermediate and above you would be just fine so Okay, excellent. Well, tell us real quick, um, how do we get up with you at your school? Um, when do you book? Uh, what's your dot com? And tell us all that fun stuff real quick. Yeah, thanks. Um, we're booking now and it's Fly My PPG LLC is our website. So dot com. So Fly My PPG LLC dot com is our website. You can find me on Facebook under the Fly My PPG page, or you can find my personal page there as well just under mike cotter um youtube i think it's listed i don't know if you're adding that as well but don't don't subscribe to my youtube channel it's awful matter of fact i have a video on there why my videos suck so <laughs> <laughs> i do it just for myself and for you know when i'm 80 years old and drooling on the couch or whatever looking <laughs> Stuff I can look back. Look at how young I was. <laughs> <laughs> like I will give a plug because I told him I would take a look at Brian Houghton's um Houghton's uh site and his his uh website off of YouTube, rather, excuse me. And I believe it's just Brian Houghton, H-O-A-T-L-I-N. So he's putting out some good quality um videos. So I I wanted to give him a little little loving as I told him I would. Plus, we have a bet on how many subscribers we can get by he can get by the end of the month, which is a whopping 260. <laughs> so, Wait, you got a bet? You got that he can get what now? So when we're sitting at breakfast in Dubai one morning, he gets a wild hair saying, you know what? By the by the end of the month, I'm gonna have no in four months, I'm gonna have a thousand subscribers. I'm like, why are you gonna do that? He's like, well, I just, you know, whatever I want to. I'm gonna start putting the day of the more videos. And then he looked at my channel. I've had this channel for eight years and I've got 260. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, by the end of the month, he's going to beat me in subscribers. And I said, dude, I will start asking people to unsubscribe to my channel <laughs> and subscribe to you so you can be there quicker. And so it's kind of a running joke with him and I. And he calls me like every day and tells me, I got three more. I got three more. He's up to like one go. night right now or something like that so wow i'm almost so, up to a thousand subscribers too are you yay yeah. what are, you gonna, are you going to change one thing in your life with a thousand subscribers compared to 100 no i actually have more than a thousand i was just being funny be real yeah, he's got over twenty thousand. yeah close to twenty five thousand on youtube yeah are you monetizing it yeah you make it money a little bit how much 
it just gives me a little Come bit on. of it gives me enough so i can buy stuff and send it out on my channel and take cruises to alaska and what did he do last month? <laughs> will how much did he make last month who will how much did he make on his youtube channel last month i don't know because i don't monetize my own oh yeah, All right. I, I make I make like I said, yeah, I make enough where we can do the podcast, you know, so I'm paying for the podcast, I'm paying for um, the Zoom, I'm paying for different things around here that we can give away, you know, so I mean, yeah. you know, I, I tried to, I tried to just put it back into this and, you know, just have right. fun with it, you know. Yeah, I, I could say it's not, it's not much. I mean, you know, no one's, it's not going to make someone rich, <laughs> you, you yeah. know what I mean? It's just so bad. And, yeah. and anybody who can understand the YouTube algorithm, they're pretty smart cookie. That's right. You just got to hang out on Robert's on a paragliding talk show more often, Sean. And then you'll see, like, you'll be like, how does he do this? Because <clears throat> then he like, I have to brag, you know, on my son. Of course. He just on paraglidingtalk.com. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you just you, you just use your paraglidingtalk.com. So I'm not going to go back to you now. OK, you just use that all up. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, I'm just the exception. I got to give you kudos. Twenty thousand subscribers. That's a boatload of people. Twenty-five thousand. Oh, my bad. Twenty-five. Jeez, 000. Mike. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I average between three and five hundred subscribers a month. Oh my God, that's unbelievable. Yeah, that's I know. Cool. I'm an old grandpa. Who the hell wants to subscribe to me? But they do. <laughs> well. well who knows? Because <laughs> between Brian and I, we're just laughing. Like, I, I don't have any ambition of doing that, nor is my quality of material very good either. So it doesn't warrant me having more than five subscribers. That would be me and my parents and my wife <laughs> and my brother, maybe. But I may, I may have a bunch of subscribers, but no one really watches my videos. I don't know why they subscribe to me. That's awesome. Maybe, it's just, maybe I'm just so cute. <laughs> it's because your dot com skills. Oh, that's oh, there it is. That's what it is. Yes, yeah, the dot com. A nice school to have. Well, Mike, real quick, uh, tell us uh, your uh, school's URL, real quick. Yeah. Again, sorry, not to, <laughs> you're changing gears on us. Uh, SplyMyPPGLLC.com. So excellent, and yeah. uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, yes, thank you, Mike. You you are incredible. Had a blast. I loved it. Uh, we also got willflyppg.com, and he helped us out in the background. He finds all the different questions and he lets us know. He also loads up that spinning wheel of Winnie thing. So, Will Fly, thank you so much for what you do. Uh, we definitely appreciate you. So, tell us about uh, your your YouTube channel and what you do on Tuesday night with Skinny Chef Shane. Okay. Um, so uh, you can check out my channel uh, YouTube just search for Will Fly or you can go to willflyppg.com just a bunch of tips some corny humor and try to make people smile uh, tomorrow night is <clears throat> paramotor uh oh just had a brain fart paramotor <laughs> hangout paramotor uh -oh. hangout paramotor hangout you've been hanging paramotor out with hangout. me Will <laughs> someone shuffled <laughs> it so no, Paramotor Hangout, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, it's uh, Mark McElroy, Shane, and myself. We get together, and it's just like hanging out at a campfire at a fly-in. We talk about paramotors or what, whatever else comes up. So yeah, come hang with us. Excellent. It's free. It's free. It's free. <laughs> it's free this week. It's free this week. Oh, oh, you got to go over to ppgshane.com. That's right. PPGShane.com will take you right there. Absolutely. Don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe and that bell notification if you haven't done so already. And also on Wednesday night, you got to go over to ParamotorGirl.com. That's uh, Flying Flamingo Jade. And then once again, Paramom USA, you got a famous son. Go ahead and let us know that. Oh. Dot com. Yes. We hear that noise in the background. My kitty, he's, he's got one of those toys where it, the ball rolls around in a in a circle, you know, like in a big plate, and so he's playing. Now he's keeping himself entertained, or whatever. Or she, I should say. Um, you can find me on uh, paraglidingtalk.com on Thursday nights with your host Robert Michaels, and um, he always has awesome show, awesome guests, and everybody always jumps in the chat, and it's a lot of fun. It's super fun, and then we have Sean that. Does a spinny winny wheel 
And then uh, Will Fly likes to hang out in the after show with us. And we all just hang out and talk about stuff. So, yes, please join us on Thursday night, paraglidingtalk.com. Excellent. And also, too, there's another show that uh, we, we learned about um, on Friday nights. Does anybody remember that one? It's the, the vaping. The right. Yeah. Vaping. Our own scuba oh. Steve does that over at paramotordude.com. So you might want to check that one out. I, yeah. it out. I checked yeah. it out last, uh, last Friday. It was pretty cool. Yeah. He's pretty good. Yeah. He talks about vaping and talks about paramotors. So here's the thing. Last week at the very end of the show, oh. we had that code, that word or word, that <laughs> phrase the phrase that pays, I think that's already been used on TV, but we're going to use it anyways. Does, does anybody remember that phrase that pays? The first person that puts in the super chat wins. What do we win? We have three Valentine's Day cards, and it's anywhere from $25 to $100 gift card that's in here. I'll send it out. I don't know which one is which because I sealed them. I don't know which one is which, and I'll send one out. You could have anywhere from 25 to a hundred dollar gift card that you can use over at paramotorarkansas.com so phrase that pays you guys remember what it is in here in, in the super chat I, I don't remember myself i hope you wrote it down <laughs> i remember because we talked about it so much i'll put it in our our chat <clears throat> remember 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 oh yeah uh-huh uh -huh, yeah uh -huh. yeah it's yeah. a good one all right anybody um say it yet or any guesses let me go over here and check it out real quick see if there's any guesses um yes i got one for this week all right uh, i don't <laughs> see anything i see scuba hangout we don't do valentine's day here at this house just saying okay well if we don't have anything in uh, two minutes, I'll just let you know what it was, and then we will go on and maybe come up with another another one. All right. So anyway, uh, thank you again. Uh, definitely appreciate you coming on the show, Mike. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. We'll see you out there soon. Hopefully, we can share some sky fly with you. I met you once before with uh, where were we? we were at the Moonshiners, I believe. Yeah. Or oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's when my trike wheel fell off. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do? Uh, it was, was a real pleasure, Mike. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Thank you, Mike. Good. Appreciate your yeah. time. For sure, Lindy. I'll see you up at yes. Torch in a couple of months, and then Will. I know I'm gonna randomly run across you as well at some of these flying. So. Yeah, definitely. Right hey, on. you're welcome to hang out with us anytime on Mondays, Mike. If you're just kind of oh. chilling out, jump in the Zoom. Thank yeah. you. We're so here. Thank you, you guys. I really appreciate what you do. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Well, I don't see hey. anybody that said what the uh, phrase that pays. Um, you want to, who wants to say what the phrase that pays was? And I'm sure as soon as we say it, you guys are going to remember it from last uh, last time. Oh, do you want me to say it? Yeah, um, let me say it. All right. Yes? Yeah. I don't see anything. So, yeah, go ahead and tell us what it was, Linda. Perfect. Barf bag. <laughs> barf bag. Remember? So barf rude. bag because so of the rude. barfing off the uh, tan. That's side. right. You got that off because you got that off of Robert's show. Yeah. And Robert showed his yeah. video when he went on his first um, tandem. Yes. Well, that dude was doing all crazy stuff. Yeah. When he got sick. And Robert is just like, he kept showing that video on his, on his show or whatever, you know, on the private show or whatever. And he was so proud of it. <laughs> oh, man, man, I'm telling you, Mike, it was just like five minutes of him contorting his face. I mean, you could tell it was coming, but he kept a smile on his face the whole time. You know? I, know. That was and, great. I know. And I was like, did you encourage him to do all those spinny things? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, well, then, God. <laughs> Mm. No all right sick. well i do like what you posted i do like that i, I think that's a good one um how many people we have left in the uh that's watching now we are down to 24 and 16 thumbs up 
Awesome. Awesome. Thank Anybody you, that can you, give us a thumbs up. If you want to give us thumbs down, make sure you press it twice. All right. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, make the um, make the uh, the phrase that pays. Uh, Will, do you want to just go ahead and say it? I, I think it was a great one. Oh, are we like not? Should I say it out loud now? Well, should we should we make it to where you have to listen to the show to, to hear it? Oh, well, that's up to you. Okay, I, I can do that. Instead of instead of watching it, do you want to say it now, or do you want to wait until we just have it on the uh, audio part? It's completely up to you. Hmm. Well, because nobody... the audio guys, the audio guys are audio mostly because they probably can't make the, the live show. All right. So the phrase that pays for next week that wins something neat will it will be camel. Camel. Camel is the camel phrase. Toe. <laughs> oh, that's even better. Let's yeah. change. It. Now remember, camel it's got to be camel toe. Has to be T O W. <laughs> like yeah. you're towing hey, the camel cool. up. All right. So I mean, I'm writing it down. Okay. Yeah, sure. not, not the not the hoof of the camel, but <laughs> no. the no. towing it up in the air with a paramotor right. wing. That's, that's yeah. what right. this is about. The camel toe. That's right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> On that note. Um, I wish you all of <laughs> I wish you all a very happy day, happy week, and we'll see you next week on PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast, Clearprop TV and Paratalk.org. Good night, y'all. Peace out, fly safe, and we'll see you tomorrow at PPG Shane's hangout. And then um who knows from there, right? All right. See you. Good night. Cheers, peace, Thanks. all that fun stuff. All right, man. Much love, was, much love. That was so incredibly fun. So we just stopped the live stream. So now we have the audio stream. <gasps> you want to post anything else now for the last part of the audio stream? I'm good, but thank you so much again. This has been Absolutely. awesome. I appreciate. It. I know you got a hot of a drive ahead of you, so we're gonna get you get some good sleep and we're rest. Get some really good sleep. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be awesome. Mike, I'll again, be- thanks again. And and when you said that you could you could be here as long as you want to, sometimes I mean we had five five hour shows before, so you know you got to remember you can't just say as much as long as you want to. <laughs> well, if you need this me, was fun. This was super fun. Super duper fun. So we're yes. the pooper scooper. All right. Do you know uh, what? Do you know what? What? I just okay. So every every week on the Zoom, you know, you see me. I'm always looking down on my little screener because I'm always learning new things. Or everything is. Well, I just figured out how to pull up the chat. Oh, really? After four years, good for you. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like. A revelation, you know what I'm saying? So we it's can't like, talk about it behind minute, that anymore. I went to that more button and then <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. Which chat are you talking about? Because we got a Zoom chat and we got the super chat. Which one are you talking about? The super chat. The super like chat I'm looking with, at it right now. With all the names out there, with all the, the people yeah, listening? Like, I think, yeah, well, is this one. Oh no, this is the one that shows all the questions, I think. Let's see. Okay, so that's the Zoom chat. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. So next week, if you're listening to this, <laughs> listening to this, not only is it camel toe for people that are watching, but for you, if you're still here, you can text me 501-747-3558, and we will call it Valentine's. And if you are the first one that texts me and you say Valentine's on a text, I will send you out one of these gift cards. And it's anything between a $25 and a $100 gift card. I will send it to you just because you heard it here on our audio stream on your favorite podcasting app. Nice. Is there okay. a cutoff on that? Because otherwise people might. The, the cutoff is is one week. So one week. if I don't hear from you in you know by the next uh, show next Monday, um, <laughs> no bueno. And also, too, if. <laughs> Somebody else already won it. I'll still send out. Uh, you know what? I'll send out a second one. So if you're the first or the second, I'll still send it out. But it has to be done by tomorrow, Valentine's Day. Makes sense. Okay. Oh, here, I, here, I was all excited. I thought, like, oh yeah, I can see. But I, I guess I have to be on my phone to see the chat, and that'd just be way too crazy. I'd be too distracted. So. <laughs>
<clears throat> and one more time, if you go over to Mike's uh, uh, flymyppgllc.com, do you have a way of uh, having customers sign up on your site? Yeah, yeah, they could, you know, fill out an application, or not an application, but just, you know, who, who they are, leave me a message, and then I, I usually am pretty good at getting right back to them. So, so if you're listening to this right now, go over to flymyppgllc.com. Have a little note and say, Mike, I heard you on PPG Grandpa's Paramotor podcast. Tell Grandpa to send me out a Valentine's Day card and I will send you out. And camel toe. And camel toe. No, not camel toe. That's for next week. This is the this is the <laughs> private one, and you gotta say, Mike, um uh PPG Grandpa, send me a Valentine's. There you go. And then if you, when you do, Mike, just uh, um, text me and uh, let me know, and I'll send that out to them. Yes. All right, guys. I get 7,000 of these, you're in trouble. What's that? These request to send you Valentine's Day stuff. <laughs> well, I'm going to send them a Valentine's. If they want to send me one, I'll, I'll give them my address. They can send me one. I don't care. That's awesome. No, they'll be listening to my phone going ping, 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 ping. <laughs> 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 well, you know, we loaded them up with a bunch of customers. That's what you, you know, I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> maybe, maybe get your uh, YouTube channel up to a thousand or so, right? Oh, that'd be unbelievably um, busy. <laughs> exactly. All right. For all you guys that are listening, thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you next week on PPG Krampus Paramotor Podcast. Peace out.